Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a hot water irrigation shirt. The shirt was prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. I'm going to start by centering the shirt, essentially getting both sides of the front of the shirt next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt next to each other. That way whenever I apply the dye or I do the hot water irrigation process, the front of the shirt is going to look more similar and symmetrical and so will the back. This process is going to go really fast, but I have a link down below this video in the description for another video which shows how to center a shirt. Okay, so now that the shirt is centered, I'm going to place a mark on the side of the shirt where I'd like for the center of the mandala to be. I'm placing my mark just a little bit below where the sleeves of the shirt are. I like for my mandala to be a little higher up on the shirt, not right in the middle of the shirt. I'm putting the mandala on both the front and the back of the shirt. So I'm going to grab the bottom portion of the shirt and fold it up to that line. Then the top portion and fold it down to that line. Basically starting a fold kind of like I was making a paper airplane. Then I'm going to pinch this seam, lift the shirt up off of the table, and fold it in half. So right now, facing me is the side of the shirt that has two folds on it. I'm going to grab one of those folds and fold it down again, then flip the shirt over and do the same thing on the other side. At this point, the shirt is folded into an eight-point mandala. You're not really going to see the points exactly the same way since I'm not tying it with sinew. But if you went ahead and tied the shirt or the mandala with sinew, it would be an eight point mandala. You could also go ahead and fold it one more time and make it into a 16 point mandala. Instead, I'm going to use hemostats on this shirt. So I've chosen to use some curved hemostats all except for the one hemostat that I'm using on the very end, which is a straight hemostat. I'm going to place the straight hemostat at an angle, and then I'm going to place the curved hemostats in pairs going up the shirt. I'm going to alternate placing the hemostats on one side, then placing them on the other side. I'm starting out using mainly 10 inch hemostats, but as the shirt gets thicker out toward the edges, I'm going to change and start using 12 inch hemostats. I have a link down below where you can purchase some hemostats and to keep the hemostats from damaging the fabric, I've gone ahead and coated them with heat shrink tubing. I purchased the heat shrink tubing at Lowe's or Home Depot. I found some at Lowe's one time in a roll and that was really nice because I could cut the pieces of heat shrink tubing to whatever length I wanted. And then I just placed them over the teeth of the hemostats use my heat gun and shrink them down to fit. If there's any excess hanging over the edge of the hemostat, I usually trim it off with just a pair of scissors. The heat shrink tubing does a couple things. It helps keep the hemostats from damaging the fabric. It also makes the hemostats grip a little bit better on the fabric. It also makes them easy to clean because I can just wash them off with some soap and water and rinse them really well and reuse them. I don't have any little bits of dye that get stuck in the teeth of the hemostats. After I'm finished applying all the hemostats to the shirt, I'm going to set the shirt aside for a few days and let it dry out completely. I've found that I get better color saturation on a mandala if the center isn't really damp. If you'd like a little more information about this, I have a blog post where I discuss this in a little bit more detail. It's out on my website and you can find a link to my website down below in the description.
Before I start applying the dye, I'm going to use a spray bottle that I filled with some soda ash solution and gently spritz the very top of this mandala. That will help the dye stick to the top a little better and not fall off the sides. I've also placed a towel underneath this mandala. That's in preparation for the hot water irrigation process. Right at the very end or the center part of the mandala, I'm adding golden pineapple from Pro Chemical and Dye. I'm also going to take the back of my spoon and smooth the dye down into the fabric. In the sections formed by the hemostats, I'm using Retro from Dye Spin, Deep Ocean from Dye Spin, Intense Blue from Pro Chemical and Dye, and Royal Blue from Dharma. In the area that's left between the hemostats, I'm using Baby Blue from Dharma. Then I'm going to use Blue Kachu from Dharma and Marigold from Dharma. Now I'm going to sprinkle some additional dry soda ash over the top. And since I'm going to do hot water irrigation, I'm going to put a pretty good amount of soda ash over the top. I'm going to spritz it again with the soda ash solution, just so that the soda ash in the dye doesn't blow around when I take this outside. To heat the water for my hot water irrigation, I'm using a sous vide wand and a container, and I'm heating my water to 160 degrees. Then I'm placing it inside of a garden sprayer. I purchased the sous vide wand and the container from Amazon, and I have a link down below in the description. The garden sprayer I purchased from Walmart. And like I mentioned, I'm going to do this entire process outside. I wanted to do a slight incline on this shirt, so I went ahead and placed one end of the rack down inside the bottom of the container. Then I'm going to gently mist the hot water over the top of the dye. 
I want to gently mist the water and let it soak in and continue that process until most of the dye on top is dissolved and it looks like the dye has gone all the way through the shirt. A lot of people who frequently do hot water irrigation will mix their dyes and soda ash together and they don't necessarily soak the shirt beforehand. I don't do hot water irrigation very often and so I don't really want to mix my dyes with the soda ash. So I kind of do a modified version of hot water irrigation where I go ahead and soak the shirt in soda ash and then add some additional soda ash over the top at the end. For the Procyon fiber reactive dye to properly bond with the fabric, it needs a couple of things. It needs a higher pH, which is where the soda ash soak comes in. The soda ash will raise the pH, and then it needs heat to properly bond it with the fabric. Normally I process a shirt at at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer for at the minimum usually 12 to 24 hours. But in the case of hot water irrigation, I am accelerating that process by heating the water up to between 145 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. They call this the one hour tie dye because you really can go ahead and tie a shirt, apply the dye and do the hot water irrigation process and be ready to rinse it in less than an hour. After I finished doing the hot water irrigation process, I left the shirt for about 15 minutes. I just let the dye and the hot water soak into the shirt really well before I began rinsing. Then I took the shirt to my utility sink and I started rinsing in cold water to try to rinse out any of the soda ash. I took the hemostats off of the shirt and warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. And then after I washed and dried the shirt, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? The very first thing I always think about every time I look at this shirt is that it reminds me of a turtle. I'm not entirely sure why, but it does. But don't get me wrong. I like the shirt. I think it looks cool and I'm really happy with all the colors. The baby blue is pretty faint, but I was kind of expecting that. That's part of the reason why I use that color. I wanted a color that went in between that wasn't going to detract from all the colors that are in between the hemostats. It also kind of looks like little jewels. It's a pretty cool effect. I like it. The golden pineapple right in the middle isn't super bright either, but it does show up and it's not a super bright color to begin with, just like the baby blue. Remember I said this one was an eight point mandala. If you look at each of the colors that I put on there around each ring, there are eight different little sections. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the shirt. And if you guys have enjoyed watching this process, and enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.